Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your go-to destination for all things Apple. Today we're continuing our iPhone Essentials series and we'll be covering how iCloud works, what it is, what it does, and what it doesn't do. So one of the most important things to understand is that iCloud is not designed to be an online storage solution. I know, that might sound crazy to you because you're backing up your pictures, contacts, messages onto iCloud. However, the keyword there is backup, which is completely different from a service like Dropbox, which is meant to store and share your most important files. So think of iCloud as a backup drive of sorts and Dropbox as a storage drive. They can do a lot of the same things, but work in slightly different ways. iCloud is designed to work in the background without you having to worry about moving files around. iCloud is great for activating the service and not having to worry about it iCloud also really shines when you have multiple Apple devices. For example, if I have iCloud photos activated, when I take a picture on my iPhone, that same photo will appear on my iPad and on my MacBook Pro, without me having to do anything at all. It just happens in the background. If you enable iCloud photos, you have to be prepared to think of your storage as a singular account. What I mean is, if you have an iPhone, iPad and a MacBook, for example, and you have iCloud Photos enabled, you will no longer have three separate storage devices. You now have three devices under one storage account, which is your iCloud. For example, if you have a picture on your iPad that you want to delete because you don't want it taking up space and you delete it, you didn't technically delete it from your iPad. You deleted the photo from iCloud, which then in turn deletes it from all your devices. Think of iCloud as a streaming service that you are in charge of. Your subscribers are your devices. If you add a show to your streaming service, then all your devices can see it. If you remove the show, then none of your devices will be able to view it. So let's talk about how to enable iCloud or how to check if iCloud's enabled. So let's navigate to settings. From here, you'll tap on your name and then you'll tap on iCloud. Once here, you'll see things like manage account storage, where you can buy more storage if you're running out. If you tap on show all, you'll be able to see all the different apps that are using iCloud, and you can toggle them on or off from here. If we go back, you'll also be able to see iCloud backups. This ensures that if you lose your device, you will be able to pick up on your next device without missing a beat. Apple only gives you five gigabytes of free storage, which is not much. And it's much lower than for example, Google, which gives you 15 gigabytes of free storage. If you decide to enable iCloud, you will soon find out that five gigabytes is not much and you will need to purchase a monthly storage plan. The plans range from 99 cents a month, which will give you access to 50 gigabytes of iCloud storage up to 59.99 a month, which will give you up to a whopping 12 terabytes of iCloud storage. Most of you, however, will be just fine with a 50 gigabyte plan or maybe a 200 gigabyte plan. So you might be wondering, how do I buy more storage? Once again, you'll go to the iCloud section, you'll tap on manage account storage, then you'll see change storage plan, just tap on it. And here you'll see the different various options anywhere from 50 gigabytes all the way to 12 terabytes. You might be wondering, if I'm backing up all my data to iCloud, then why do I still need an iCloud device backup? This is a very valid question. An iCloud device backup includes all your information and settings stored on your device that aren't already syncing to iCloud. We're talking about things like device settings, home screen layouts, the wallpaper, and app organization. This device backup ensures that when you're setting up your new iPhone, everything will look and act exactly the same as on your old one. Most of us use our phone and navigate them without really thinking where the apps are at. We're so used to where everything is at, so a device backup will help you save the time of having to reorganize everything from scratch. You might be wondering, what's the difference between an iCloud device backup and a computer device backup? And the answer is pretty much nothing. The only difference is that the iCloud device backup happens automatically every night without you ever having to worry about it. All you have to do is have the option enabled, be on Wi-Fi, and plug it into power. Doing it on a computer, take some discipline and practice in order for you not to forget to do it. You can set it up via Wi-Fi on your network. However, that takes a few more steps. Another aspect of iCloud worth noting 
is their commitment to privacy and security. We're talking about end-to-end -end encryption for your data and the option for two-factor authentication. And you can rest assured that your personal information is well protected. But iCloud's integration goes beyond just storage. It's a part of the wider Apple ecosystem. This means your notes, reminders, calendar events are all kept in sync across all your devices too. It's about the seamless continuity that makes switching from your iPhone to your Mac to your iPad feel completely natural. Plus, with features like iCloud Drive, you can organize your files just like you would on a physical hard drive. And if you're ever running out of space, Apple makes it easy to manage your storage. You can see which apps and services are using up the most room and make adjustments accordingly. Regularly reviewing your iCloud storage to remove what you don't need anymore will help you free up space and avoid paying for more storage than is necessary. I hope this clarifies any confusion about iCloud. For more Apple tips, consider watching this video link right here. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.